important that everybody starts to work together and of course we're not going to agree on all issues. But one thing we do need is a free and unfettered uh, press and media and uh, this, this one's quite interesting that you've picked up on, Mike, about uh, the BBC getting uh, stroppy. Yeah, well, of course, in the last couple of days, we saw this propaganda about the number of court cases involving the, the TV licence. Uh, this article in the Mail, I just uh, uh, the reason I'm including it is because I objected to the headline so much. So the threat to, TV, to the TV licences, BBC reveals more watched programmes online, fueling fears thousands are legally dodging fee. Right, and so you ask the question, how do you legally dodge anything? They're they're implying that by not breaking the law, you're breaking you're breaking the law, or at least you're being, uh, you know, uh, immoral in some way. You're, you're you're breaking some kind of moral code by dodging something. People who are simply watching iPlayer or are watching YouTube uh, and are not using the television to watch live tel- TV have no obligation under the legislation to buy a TV license. Why should they? They're not dodging anything. Uh, so I object to this this sort of rather disingenuous uh, uh, attempt by the mail to almost brand them the same way that they've been branding benefits cheats, for, you know, p- calling people that are claiming benefits benefits cheats. Is this the BBC starting to run scared that people are actually picking up on the fact it's not worth paying for? Well, I, I, I'm also going to question, Brian, you, I, I agree with you actually, uh, but I'm also going to say 20% of all new court cases are TV licensed court cases? Are you, are you serious? I mean, where do they get these numbers from? So 20% of all new cases in court or have to do with TV license evasion. Is that what they're saying, Mike? That, that was more or less what they were saying, but of course I believe that's just a piece of propaganda. It's a nudge to try and give people a little in, uh, incentive to go and buy their TV license. Mm, yeah. A little nudging. Again. Yeah, a little, little bit of nudging. Yeah. Well, let's get into the heart of the matter because, of course, the BBC is a corrupt uh, organisation. Um, now, this was kindly sent to us by a viewer. They pointed out that a little while ago, this is going back to the 15th of August, the Daily Record up in Scotland um, uh, pointed out that BBC Scotland staff had been accused of sex abuse. This was connected to the Jimmy Savile scandal. Uh, But what is interesting is the corporation have refused to reveal the exact number of people involved or the offences they committed. So now we've we've got yet another, um, I'm going to say, set of evidence here showing us that inside the BBC we've had paedophiles working for many years, which of course is what many victims have been telling us. And let's uh, remember that uh, this very brave man, Robert Green, Uh, went to prison because he was prepared to speak out about the paedophile abuse of Down syndrome girl Holly Gregg. Um, He was ultimately uh, put in prison, uh, many would say, on totally cooked up charges. He had to be silenced uh, because the paedophile ring had links to the highest levels of the Scottish establishment. And uh, the then procurator fiscal, Heidi Shangelini, was... uh, was involved in uh, uh, getting the charges against Robert. So he spent three months in prison. Um, He had actually done nothing at all. Now, we were informed a little while ago that Operation U-Tree has taken up the case of uh, Holly Gregg. We now believe that, uh, surprise, surprise, it's all gone very cool. And this seems to be the way it is with the police. The moment the connections uh, appear between uh, paedophilia and people in positions of power. Life gets very uh, difficult. Um, We believe that the case against Robert um, uh, by uh, Ms Angelini is still continuing. Uh, We've reported on this case uh, many times. Scotland proves itself to be the paedophile capital of the world. This is not a slight on uh, Scots north of the border, but this is... uh, starting to take the lid off some very, very unpleasant things going on in Scotland. And, of course, we'd like to remind uh, viewers that it was um, BB Scotland that pulled their investigation into Holly, uh, the abuse of Holly Gregg. They had already sent emails saying they were convinced she had been abused, and then suddenly uh, BBC Scotland pulled their investigation. Now, if that's a one-off issue... We would like to highlight here that the BBC has recently done exactly the same. 
over the multiple allegations of particularly vile paedophile and sexual physical abuse at Oxford and Cherwell Valley College, that's in Thames Valley Police District, and the BBC initially wanted information Uh, But when they were offered documentary evidence and they were offered the opportunity to meet and interview victims, they suddenly pulled back out of it. So what's going on here? Well, we know for a fact that paedophiles have been operating in the BBC. Are they still operating? And are those the people that are prepared to close down investigations into paedophiles elsewhere? We'll wait and see. Not to be trusted. And we're going to end on this extraordinary story.